Welcome to our second part of OCI IAM uh, domains presentation and also description of identity um, services in OCI. On the previous uh, video, I presented you the compartments, how to create a compartment, how to use them. Uh, yeah, just to browse it from here, yeah, from the scope yeah, of the applications and so on. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start uh, getting a little bit more into uh, identity domains. If you are, let's say, an older user of OCI, uh, if you look in here how an identity domain looks like, yeah, the menus, you gonna, uh, let's say, compare it directly with Oracle Identity Cloud Service, okay? As you can see, in the backend, it's still an Oracle Identity Cloud Service, yeah, so that's the service that uh, is still used in the backend, but what the Oracle did, they simplified the uh, the way a user can create users, the how they can integrate directly into the OCI console. So at this point, you don't need to do mapping between IDCS groups and OCI uh, groups and so on. Okay, so this was the first step. Now in here, you can go, let's say maybe you started with a free application, but you need more, you know for sure that. So you can go and you can do an update to a premium application by simply clicking on the change the domain type and change the type itself. You can edit the domain and uh, yeah, you can select, yeah, it's a default domain. You can try to move it in different location, not the default one, but others, you can do that. Uh, you can see the report, you have the audit report directly in here. So everything that is generated in this uh, identity domain, yeah, they will appear in the audit logs. Yeah, so you'll be able to see what users are doing. I will delve into this when I'm gonna go into the audit part, yeah, into the observability. And uh, yeah, notifications, you can go and put your own branding in here on this page. You're gonna want to see how it's gonna look and so on. So, because this is just an intro, I will not get into the depth in this, but what I'm gonna do in here, I'll create a new user. Okay, so let me name it demo user. Yeah, the user, I can go and put it, uh, I can create a username and use uh, the same, uh, an email and a username. But let me do it much simpler. Yeah, the username will gonna be demo, and the email can be uh, the same as uh, I used before. Okay, so yeah, I can use this email address. Now, what I can do from the beginning? Yeah, you recommend to have also an additional user, so I will add it directly to the administrator group. And after I'm doing this, yeah, so this user is an administrator. It has let's say 95 percent of the capabilities um, of uh, let's say the initial administrator yeah but it's 95 percent so you need to remember all of this yeah because if you want more the initial administrator will be needed for additional uh, uh, let's say rights yeah that you need to give it uh, to the user in here yeah you see if you click on edit user capabilities you can allow them to use local password if you want yeah okay this is not applying uh, anymore to yeah, you can go and you don't. You can allow him to use API keys to connect to programmatically to his authentication tokens. Yeah, it can be used for database passwords and all of that. Now, yeah, because we have the user in here, what we can do next time, yeah, when we're gonna connect, it will ask us uh, to in, uh, enter the multi-factor authentication. Yeah, so this is one of the first things that we have with with the new account. And uh, what we're gonna do also in here, yeah, I want to, I have the administrator groups. Yeah, for administrator groups, everything it is already created. So now what I can do, I can create another group that is gonna be called also demo. Yes, to make it much simpler. And in here, yeah, I will not add any user at this point because those users are administrators, so I don't want to give them some rights and I don't know why it's put it in there. But I'll go to back to users in here, I'll create a new user. Let's say I'm gonna name it demo2, yeah, demo2, no rights, yeah, in here, I'll put it demo2, the username, as you can see, yeah, use the email address, I'll go again, use my email address, okay, so yeah, I have this, and I'll add it directly to the demo2 will be a user into the demo rock group, I'll click create, and another thing that I want to do in here, I'll go up in the domain to the identity and I'll create a new domain yeah, in here, a new compartment, yeah. So, ah, I already created a demo compartment, yeah. So demo compartment was created previously. So now what I need to do, I need to go to the policies 
and in here I'll create a new policy at the root level this time yeah I'll name it demo policy and I will leave it demo in here I'll click show manual editor and I will allow group demo to manage all resources in compartment demo okay so I'll click create this so that means that all the users that I'll add to this compartment demo yeah they will be allowed to manage everything that is in the demo compartment now there, there is also something uh, important yeah I said that I'm gonna put the networking part uh, in uh, uh, in a different uh, compartment so what I can do I can go and I can create a new policy I can go and name it network policy and in here if you are new to this and you don't know how to use it you can click the help menu you'll be redirected to the policies and in here there are a few examples of how policy can be created yeah so as you seen before allow a group to do something yeah so the, to do what you are allowing it yeah the authentication part is done uh, yeah to, by uh, creating the group yeah so that group can be authenticated but the authorization part is created by this yeah by a policy so you authorize a certain group to do something in your tenancy yeah so you specify where what are the resources that tenancy can uh, be touched by this and after that you also specify what is the location it can be on a full tenancy or it can be in a tenant in a compartment yeah and so on so some basic uh, yeah example I'll grow group, group help desk to manage users in tenancy okay this will allow that group yeah to uh, create users uh, yeah reset users and so on manage means that it gives also the rights to delete users okay so that is uh, powerful yeah manage yeah manage right it is a very powerful one all manage all resources in a compartment again it is a very powerful uh, policy yeah, that will allow to delete all the resources that are in there so it's important to take a look onto the verbs yeah so in the verbs you're gonna understand yeah you start from the smallest one it is usually you give it to a third party auditor yeah the inspect part after that for something more advanced let's say maybe internal aud auditors that also wants to see the metadata of the resources they want to see let's see ip addresses uh, they want to see what is the system operating system and so on yeah you go with the read user and the last one yeah that sh it should be used in day to day by all the users it is the use verb yeah you put it in there allow group uh, i don't know network administrators uh, to to use all resources in a certain compartment in our case yeah because we're in here what i wanted to do yeah i wanted to allow the demo group to use the network yeah in that compartment yeah, in the compartment network compartment so in here, yeah, let network means manage a cloud network. Okay, so as you can see in here, if you're gonna use the policy builder, we specify this, we select the identity domain. In our case, it is the default, so I will not need to put uh, yeah, the default uh, name in there. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be something like this demo. Yeah, default is the domain slash demo. If you have domain one, it's gonna be allow group uh, domain one slash uh, demo and uh, to manage or to use and so on. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do in here, yeah, I will put this okay. I will move back to manual editor and instead of manage, I can put use now. Okay, so this group demo will be able to use uh the virtual network uh, family in the compartment network okay so this is the basic networking uh, allow option so with all of these in place next step that we have to do in here is to create uh yeah a network yeah but this will be part on the next series okay so now we have a user that user was created yeah we have multiple users now yeah it was created in a domain that users were, were added to a group demo in here yeah we have uh, created uh, outside yeah we have created a policy that will allow the user in that group to do something in different compartments yeah in my case it's gonna be in the demo compartment okay so I will stop this recording in here and I will talk a little bit later about the dynamic groups. Yeah, so this is more advanced part. The dynamic groups in a domain are used for 
machine to machine discussion. So when I'm going to start uh, enabling a service that has, uh, um, yeah, that is using, uh, um, let's say, uh, I don't know, well, you want to select logging or a servant, uh, service that is part of OCI and so on, and you don't want to connect automatically uh, from that machine, maybe to run an OCI CLI. Uh, yeah, without uh, credentials, yeah, and uh, you know that machine that where you have OCI CLI installed, it is using uh, um, OCI to to be hosted into it. Then what you can do, you can use a dynamic group and run it in there from that machine. So I will present it a little bit later uh, this part. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for listening to me, and see you on our next video.